here in the Coral Triangle in Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea. This part of the world relies heavily on coral reefs and fish that will be affected by ocean acidification for its food. So we decided to find a community that relies on ocean fish for its protein more than some others. We wound up in this village of former sea gypsies in the South Sulawesi region of Indonesia. It is a stark and amazing way to live and an incredible place to work as a journalist. The first thing you notice, of course, is that people here live in houses built on stilts above the water. But the next thing you notice, right away, is that everything here is loud. Between the wind and the waves and the cough of diesel engines, people here are just used to constant shouting. It's hard to explain how far removed this place is from the Western world. Just getting here from Seattle took six flights and a three-hour boat ride. We stayed on nearby Hoga Island at a mostly empty research station where monitor lizards fought over kitchen scraps and the walking paths were frequented by banded sea crates, a deadly type of ocean snake. Our translator, Imin, connected us with a boatman and every day we paid that boatman, Duda, to take us to the stilt village to visit with his neighbors. Duda, like most villagers, never let an opportunity on the water pass without attempting to catch some fish. Talking to some of the more senior villagers, such as Mbilia, required working with multiple translators. The poverty at times was overwhelming. We met a widow who made her living getting paid to collect dead coral and to stack it below people's homes for support. The everyday risks were sometimes hard to ignore. We saw adults who had lost limbs to dynamite fishing accidents. Adults and children alike daily traverse crumbling boardwalks. Some of the homes were connected to these boardwalks by a single flimsy treacherous log. Our attempts to cross provided villagers no end of amusement. But the Sama people, often referred to as Bajau, were open to us from the start. They shared their homes and their lives without question. No matter what happens with climate change and ocean acidification, it's clear that the people who live here don't have many options. They will continue to go out on the water and fish every day, and the women will go to the marketplace and sell that fish wherever they can because at the moment, for the moment at least, they don't appear to have any other options. You gotta smile, dude. <laughs>